Today, we're going to be addressing the question, why are people buying gold? and what it means for you. From generation to generation, there's been an unbroken chain of financial responsibility taken advantage of, and that is the accumulation of precious metals. But an interesting thing to observe is that even though there's been a common denominator, there's been the same denominator all this time, let's say the quote unquote numerator, if you will, varies not only between generations, but also from culture to culture as people take into account the cultural and economic factors of their day. Now, in our context today, we still have the common denominator. People, including ourselves, are accumulating gold. That's the common denominator. But why? What is the reason for gold buying today in our culture and in our economic environment? That's what we're going to be talking about. Now, when this question is first posed, a few things may come to your mind right off the top. People buy gold because of inflation, or people are buying gold because it's an election year, or people buy gold because they're prepping alarmists that don't trust the government or their currency, and they're exchanging that currency for real money. Now, all of those are valid reasons. Yes, even that last one. But for the purpose of this content, I want to hone in on one specific reason that I believe pervades just about every investor's decision process even if it's somewhat subconscious, and that is that gold is resilient. The thing that's often ignored by analysts out there, even though it's a somewhat obvious reality, is that despite innumerable periods of time that, by all fundamental accounts, should have hurt gold badly, we see this resilience of gold play out. Just as one quick example, which is kind of hard for us to comprehend at the present time because of the inflationary period that we live in, back between 2012 and 2016, we were actually under quite a bit of deflationary pressure. Now, that should be terrible for gold, and yet what we saw was that despite a number of times when gold dropped to nearly $1,000 per ounce, it would bounce back. It shouldn't have on paper, but because the markets are psychological and driven by humans, the bearish environment didn't matter enough to crash gold as far as it perhaps should have. Now, I believe that this is the case because people know that gold should be a supported asset. It should be a part of their portfolio because of its protective properties. So whether we're dealing with inflationary periods or deflationary periods, totally opposite ends of the spectrum, gold remains resilient in the minds of people with the understanding that gold just like we discussed in a previous video, transcends the volatility of fiat currency. Now, another thing that presents danger to our dollars, but that gold will no doubt remain resilient through, is the potential abandonment of the dollar. In other words, de-dollarization. Whether you're talking about economic enemies of the United States, like the BRICS nations, Russia, China, and so on and so forth, or even our allies like Germany, France, or most of the European Union for that matter, they are all frustrated with the dominance that the U.S. has had on the global monetary system. They don't like the fact that we can enact sanctions or penalize them for violating those sanctions. De-dollarization is very near the top of the priority list for most of the first world countries around the globe, and that should grab our attention for this reason. We have to be prepared for that monetary shift when it takes place. And by the way, that includes us preparing on the behalf of our children's children. It may not happen in our lifetimes, but we still need to be prepared for it. So how do we do that? How do we prepare? We do that by investing in a financial insurance that's resilient to such changes, and gold fits that criteria. It's interesting, because if you'd like to know an example of what that looks like, and whether or not people even look at gold in that way, look no further than the emerging markets around the world. In other words, developing economies that are working really hard to modernize and become self-sufficient, and even a bigger player in the global economy. These developing economies, or emerging markets, are very vulnerable to the whims of the Federal Reserve and our very volatile fiat dollar. Because so many of these countries rely on the dollar, the monetary policy of the Federal Reserve has a massive impact on these developing countries. For now, the dollar is still the world reserve currency, and so it's still held by all of these nations. So what do they do about the volatility? What do they do about the fear of a weak dollar or weak monetary policy? Well, many of the central banks of these emerging markets, like the Philippines or Taiwan or Vietnam, they have all been increasing their gold reserves over the past decade, and guess why? It's because they know that gold is resilient against the instability of the dollar. So now let's bring this back a little bit and talk about the individual American, perhaps you and your family. As we've already established, the reason people are buying gold is because they know gold is resilient. And we've discussed just a couple of the examples that demonstrate that. However, I want to end with a final thought regarding American citizens or really any uh, individual or any individual citizen around the world for that matter. 
for decades now, and really since the advent of a totally fiat money system in the early 70s, there has been a traceable war on cash intended to remove the last bit of financial independence that citizens of a country have. The U.S. Treasury bond market, which by the way is the largest securities market in the world, it's been totally digital since the 1980s. And as we speak, a mere 3% of U.S. dollars are physical dollars. The rest are digitally stored in servers around the globe. And by the way, while the quote-unquote war on cash is a useful way to talk about this topic, it's important to note, the war has been over for at least three decades, and the government won. However, our financial magistrates out there have given the people this security blanket of a minuscule cash circulation, which has made us feel a little bit better about all this all these years. But as the sun sets on whatever cash is left, we have all the more reason to allocate a portion of our wealth into something that is resilient, namely gold. You would do that for the very same reasons you might hold cash now while you still can. Cash can be a very useful tool in emergencies. And if you live in a place that's vulnerable to the grid going down, whether that be because of stress on the grid or bad weather or anything like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's good to have some cash on hand. Uh, for when you can't scan your debit card or something like that. So what do you do when you can actually chart a sustained and even accelerated move toward digital currencies and this impending cashless society? Well, given that such a society would be immediately susceptible to things like bail-ins, I'm sure you've heard of that recently, bank account freezes, maybe potential confiscations, negative interest rate policies, and on and on and on, it may be worth considering a move to an alternative form of money that's not digital at all and that can replace those physical dollars that we enjoy, at least for the time being. Again, gold fits the criteria, and something that can be an antidote to the problems that I mentioned before as they relate to digital currency. We need that resilience. We need the resilience that gold carries, if not for ourselves, for our kids and our grandkids, because there will come a day when they'll need the safety net of tangible assets that actually have a track record as sustainable money, because the writing is on the wall. Fiat currencies have historically always failed, and digital currencies are just too vulnerable. Well, that's it for today, everybody. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more, check out the links in the description below, and we'll see you next time.